praise God. Come on, how many want to upgrade? Come on, just say, I receive an upgrade in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Great to be with you guys tonight. And uh, I think the last time my wife and, here, my wife and I were here, uh, last time was a year ago to like the day. So that's interesting. Uh, so we're, we're, we're glad to be back in California in the land of In-N-Out Burger and Burrito King. Come on, somebody. Don't get religious on me in church now. Come on. You know you like In-N-Out Burger. So um, anyways, just lift your hands for a moment. Wow. Lord, we just thank you right now. Woo! Lord, we thank you. All that you want to do tonight, Lord. All you want to pour out on us tonight, Lord. Lord, we just open our hearts. Thank you for your glory, God. For your heavy, weighty kabod. Your glory. That never runs dry. <clears throat> never runs out. Lord, let it spring up within each one of us tonight, Father. Let it, let it be rivers that flow out of your throne, out of the throne, God, right now, out of our bellies right now, Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> well, praise God. Just give God a mighty shout. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. Feels good in here tonight. Feels good in here. Come on, hit your neighbor. Say, I'm not leaving tonight without my breakthrough, without my healing, without my impartation. Come on, without my upgrade. Hallelujah. Well, it really is uh, just a blessing and, and, and an honor to be here. We love the Parcells, Parcell family. Just an awesome, awesome family, amen, anointed family that love to take us out to eat in good places like Burrito King. I mean, it's such a blessing. We're suffering for the gospel. I tell you, every time we come here, brother, it's, I gain five, five pounds every time I come here. <laughs> Not really, though. I wish I could. That would be like a weight gain miracle. Some people want a weight loss miracle. I need a weight gain miracle. Intercessors pray. No. Uh, anyways, we've been seeing some really incredible miracles in our ministry this year. I want to I just share with you guys a few of the powerful testimonies we've uh, seen on the road. And um, it's just been amazing. God's just been blessing us. It's the favor of God. The hand of God is on us. Everything you prophesy is really true. The doors have been springing open for my wife and I. And just the blessing and the favor of the Lord. How many want favor? Come on, how many know favor isn't fair? Come on, favor just, just comes on whoever God chooses. You can have favor, amen? What, what could take you 10 years to get, you could get in 10 days. Because there's an acceleration in the glory. Come on, you get in the glory and revelation just comes. It, it unlocks things on the inside of you. You get in the glory and finances don't, they're not, they're not hard. It just begins to flow. It just begins to pour. Yeah. Come on, you, that job promotion you want, just get in the glory. Just begin to speak things in the glory. Begin to, begin to speak what you want, what you have need of in the glory and watch breakthrough and change come. How many of you believe that? Come on. Breakthrough is yours, Amen. My wife and I, we've been just all over the place this year. We've been, we've been zigzagging all over the U.S. map, and so it's been incredible. We were just on the East Coast, and uh, they have pizza like pie there. It's amazing. I mean, you guys in California, you don't know what you're missing. I mean, pizza, this side, like bricks. It's, it's just, there's a lot of glory on that, I'm telling you right now. And uh, anyways, we've been, we've been on the East Coast like four or five times this year. And in one meeting, it was really interesting. Uh, Friday night, we were ministering in New York. And uh, this, I saw in the spirit this whirlwind come down over this woman. And uh, I, just spoke, I just spoke the whirlwinds on you. God's healing you right now. Whatever you have need of, is, it's happening right now. And this woman had a hole in her foot for over two years from a surgery that she had. And this, the surgery just 
didn't go well, the wound didn't properly heal. But in the meeting that night, God gave her a recreative miracle where the skin regrew back. Come on, somebody. So I don't know why a whirlwind, I don't know, but it was, it was amazing. It was a recreative miracle, and uh, it was really, really awesome. I just love that. I love the power of God. I love those uh, miracle mantles, like what A. Allen moved in, what R. W. Schambach moved in, and I'm more drawn towards the raw faith healing ministries. You know, that's why my wife and I love Todd Bentley so much. It's not just because he has an awesome beard. But it's because he has that awesome anointing, that mantle, and we've gotten under that mantle and gotten that impartation. And so I love to talk about miracles and the miracle realm and how to move in miracles, and we love to teach on all that stuff. But my wife was saying to me um, after a meeting one night, after, after we were in, on the East Coast, and I said, honey, we saw such incredible miracles tonight. It, God was moving. It was amazing. You know, people were getting healed of all, all sorts of stuff. And Amy said to me, she said, honey, that's awesome. That's great, babe. But you need to be more prophetic. You need to go more for the prophetic. So how many of you love it when your wife rebukes you? Amen. Come on. That's, we need more of that. And uh, so, she, you know, me, me and my wife, we challenge each other in different areas. I challenge her. She challenges me. It's like iron sharpens iron. Amen. Come on. So, so I started pulling out my old prophetic books. You know, how to prophesy. and all, You know, you got your prophetic books you really love. And then those prophetic books you don't really love. Just some of them are good. Some of them are not so much. Uh, but I was just returning back to that foundation of, of the purpose of prophecy. And, and the spirit of prophecy. And the gift of prophecy. And just restirring that well and that hunger and that desire. Because the Bible says that God will give you the desires of your heart. How many of you know that's true? And so we were invited to do this conference and uh we we got there i think it was saturday night and i was praying for people going down the 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 line and i got to this man and i laid hands on him and i said your life is not over it's just beginning and so i spoke that and i thought what did i just say that what kind of prophetic word is your life is not over it's just beginning and uh anyways the, the pastor texted me the next day and he said, you know the man you prophesied over Saturday night? You said his life is not over, but it's just beginning. And I said, yeah, yeah, I know the guy that I prophesied over. What about it? He said, the man came to your meeting Saturday night and he was going to commit suicide. But you, he got a word from the Lord, the spirit of suicide broke off of his life. Come on, somebody. And so he's been totally set free and delivered, and he's being discipled now. Isn't that awesome? Come on, how many want to be more prophetic and less pathetic? Amen? Come on. If there's hope for me, there, there's hope for you. There's definitely hope for you if there's hope for me. So um, anyways, I've been working on trying to be more prophetic. Because my wife is like super prophetic. Like she'll get names and dates, and so uh, it's good though. It's good. You know, you get around different people, you flow in different things. Amen. Come on. It's so good. It's so good. I actually had a dream uh, a couple months ago. I had this dream where uh, I was, it was a staircase, and I was climbing up the stairs. I was running up the stairs, actually, and I was telling the Lord in the dream, I was saying, Lord, I want to prophesy. I want to prophesy. Give me the spirit of prophecy. I want to prophesy. And uh, the higher I got up got up on the stairs, the more I could hear the Lord's voice, the more I could see and the more I could hear. And so I believe that I was in the spirit of, of prophecy. I know that that sounds weird, but that's what the Lord, the interpretation the Lord gave me was I was in the spirit of prophecy. And there's levels in the gift of prophecy. How many know there's, there's, there's the gift of prophecy and then there's the office of the prophet? So somebody that has a mantle, it's like a higher level, right? When something's spoken, like Prophet Samuel, uh, there, there was words that he spoke, every word that he spoke came to pass. Because the Lord didn't allow one of his words to ever fall and hit the ground. Actually, the word uh, Samuel means the Lord has heard. So that's really prophetic, right? The Lord, the Lord hears. 
But anyways, I believe we're entering into a new season of seeing and hearing. Come on, and that's dreams, that's visions, that's stepping into a new dimension. Come on, how many of you want that? I don't, I don't even know if you know of all of what that means, but I believe that there is a new season coming where we're going to hear more clearly. We're going to see more clearly. If you want it, it's yours. But you've got to want it. You've got to desire it. Because nothing comes without a desire. The Bible says earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. Right? They don't just sovereignly just fall on you. You've got to desire them and go after them. Come on, he who seeks finds. Knocking the door will be open, right? got to be hungry. you got to go after that stuff. Whew. Well, it's good. I know I'm going into a season of seeing and hearing. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Shukara basata. Oh, anyways, that's good. I love all that stuff. I love all that stuff. Seeing, hearing, dreams, visions. I've been getting a lot of dreams this year. A lot of dreams. So I'm going to pray that for you tonight. Just lift your hands right now. Lord, I pray that it would be a season of dreams, visions, seeing, hearing over this house, Father. Lord, that you would even give us a brand new ear to hear, Lord. Even your word. That your word would go deep in each one of us, God. That our eyes would be open to see. Lord, like, like the prophet Elisha prayed over his servant, that his eyes would be open. Father, I thank you that there is an impartation of seeing and hearing over this house. God, that we would see the things in the unseen world. God, that even a perspective would change of, of where we would, we would rise up in faith, God, to speak those things that are not as though they are. Lord, and that we would see in the future and pull it into the now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Well, I just wanted to release that, amen? I just wanted to release that. Uh, so, so this morning my wife shared on governmental authority and governmental mantles. Like, like how Moses had a, a mantle of government. And so I'm going to just continue off of that. I'm going to just kind of piggyback off of that tonight. We're going to talk about the glory, the kingdom of God, and even how to have personal dominion in your life. How many of you want that? personal dominion in your life. So I want to share with you what is available to us as sons and daughters of God, the kingdom and all its fullness and power that we have access to. Somebody say amen. Come on, slap your neighbor, high five, say I am getting this word tonight. Woo, hallelujah. Come on. Now, now, we need to understand that when Jesus began His earthly ministry, He was given a mandate from the Father to preach the gospel of the kingdom. In every city, in every village, Jesus boldly declared, the kingdom of God is at hand. How many of you know that was Jesus' message? He was sent to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Every, every city Jesus entered into, He said, heaven is here. The kingdom is here. You know, what Jesus, you know what Jesus was doing? He was declaring. He was speaking those things that are not as though they are. He was saying the glory's here. Heaven is here. Come on, Jesus came to bring a whole new mindset regarding the kingdom of God. See, see Jesus, he, he said the kingdom is not low here or low there, but the kingdom of God is in you. How many of you know Jesus was a carrier of the glory of God? How many of you know you're a carrier? Come on. Jesus carried the kingdom wherever He went. He released the kingdom wherever He went. He declared that the kingdom of God was, was in every place that He went to. You know what? Every, everywhere that I go to, the kingdom is there. Because the kingdom's in me. It's the same kingdom in me that was in Jesus. It's the same power in me that was in Jesus. Same power, same kingdom, same Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. It is good. How many know the kingdom really looks like something? That heaven really looks like something? Heaven's a real place. Amen? Come on, heaven's a real place, and there's no sickness in heaven. There's no disease in heaven. There's no, there's no torment in heaven. Come on, there's no broke people in heaven. 
See, when heaven comes, it comes to transform everything to make it look like heaven. It comes to transform the earth to make it look like heaven. You know what? God wants you victorious like you were living up there. Set free like you were living up there. Strong, healthy, rich like you were living up there. Come on. You know, you don't have to wait to die to experience heaven. Some Christians, they walk in depression, live in depression, say, I'll get joy when I get there. But the Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say joy. Come on, that means I can have joy right now because the kingdom's in me. I don't have to wait till I get to heaven to experience joy. I can have joy right now. I can have glory right now. Come on, because the glory's in me. Hit your neighbor, say the glory's here. Hit him again. Say the glory's here. Shupalarabasata. <laughs> you know what's amazing is um, I was in New York this year, and we've been seeing just such incredible uh, miracles this year. It's really been a greater level of, of miracles, healings. I was in New York this year, and uh, my wife were outside of Buffalo preaching, three day conference, doing night meetings, three night meetings then a Sunday morning, then Saturday we did some kind of TV program, uh, TCT Rejoice. It was actually aired all over the place in New York, Canada, so we got to release miracles off of this live broadcast. It was, it was a lot of fun, but uh, you know, after doing all that, it takes a lot of grace and mercy to do a Sunday morning. How many know what I'm talking about? No, you don't know what I'm talking about, but I know what I'm talking about because I travel all over the place. And so I'm on the revivalist schedule where I stay up late and I'm not really used to getting up early because we're traveling all over the place. But anyways, I'm invited to do the Sunday morning and I get there and I'm thinking, well, it's a Sunday morning. I mean, it's a miracle when God can move on a Sunday morning. Amen? Come on, everybody's like, come on, Burrito King is, need to get up out of here. And uh, anyways, I get to this meeting, and um, the power of God was, was just, I mean, the, the atmosphere was charged. It was like there was something in the air. It was like electricity. It was like, I, I don't know, it just an atmosphere for healing. You know, there's times where there's a gift on me for healing, but then there's other times where it's an atmosphere. It's like a pool of Bethesda. It's like the river of God is flowing. And... Um, and so I started to get words of knowledge, and there was a woman in the meeting. She, she had constant back pain and hip pain her entire life. And, and I had her sit in a chair, and God grew her leg out right in front of everybody. I could barely get the lady to testify in the mic because she was so drunk in the Holy Ghost dancing. It was amazing. You, you should have been there, I'm telling you. It was amazing because she came walking up leaping. But then God grew her leg out, and then she's dancing and running all over the place. It was just, it never gets old to see the power of God and miracles and healings. It's awesome. It's the greatest job on earth, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm having a blast with Jesus. Amen. It's amazing. Um, there was a woman that was healed of glaucoma in the service. Just God totally opened her eyes, and it was, it was really awesome. But the most amazing thing that God did which still blows me away, the most amazing thing that God did, was I called out this word for tumors. And so this woman came to the front, responding for the word of knowledge, and uh, the woman had her 11-year-old daughter next to her. That Her daughter's uncontrollably weeping in fear for her mother because her mother's recently been diagnosed with multiple tumors in her abdomen. This is a serious situation, like where God has to intervene. This woman needs a miracle, amen? And so I, pray, I prayed for the woman. I just laid hands on her. I began to pray. I'm telling you, the fire of God went through my hand, went right into her body. And I knew in my heart she would be healed. And, say, and so, some people say, well, how do you know that she was going to be healed? Sometimes you just know. Sometimes you get that feeling, you just know. It's like the woman with the issue of blood said within herself, if I may press through the crowd and grab hold of the hem of Jesus' garment, I will be made whole. 
See, and what happened was the woman pressed in for her miracle, her breakthrough, what she had need of. She grabbed hold of the hem of Jesus' garment, and the Bible says that virtue, power went out of him. Virtue went out of him because virtue was in him. Come on. And, and, and so what happened, what happened was Jesus turned to his disciples and said, who touched me? And they said, Jesus, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. You're walking through the crowd. You're bumping into people. Everybody's touching you. But Jesus felt somebody place a demand on the anointing. Do you understand that faith places a demand on the power of God? Places a demand on the anointing. And so he felt virtue. He felt that healing anointing go out of him. It's the same thing I felt when I prayed for that lady. How many know that Jesus was a son of God just like we're sons and daughters of God? How many know he was a, a, a model, a prototype of what we're to be like? Come on, did Jesus not say, the same works that I do shall you do, and even greater works than these shall you do? Whew, come on, you're getting it this morning. Or tonight. Tonight, you're getting it tonight. Hallelujah. I can feel the pull, praise God. But anyways, this woman went to the doctor Wednesday. She had already been diagnosed with multiple tumors. She, the, doctor, the doctors had the x-rays. She goes to the doctor Wednesday. They redo the x-rays to do the surgery. Couldn't find the tumors. <sighs> Come on, somebody. Isn't that awesome? Isn't God, a, isn't God a, amazing? It's amazing. I'm telling you, you should have been there, but you weren't there. But you should have been there to see the power of God on this lady. Totally healed from tumors. How many know if God can heal tumors, He can move mountains? Come on, mountains of debt. Come on, if God can heal tumors, He can bring you a breakthrough. How many know He's the great I Am? How many know He's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Come on, some of you just need to be like Mary. Lord, be it unto me according to Your Word. Turn, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you would, tonight. You guys are hungry tonight. I'm happy to be here. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. First Corinthians chapter two, verse four. Paul said, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of God, or the wisdom of men, excuse me, but in the power of God. Come on, shout power tonight. This, is a, this, is, this scripture is so powerful. Because it's Paul the Apostle saying, I didn't come to you with enticing words. I didn't come to you with big swelling words that are void of power. But I came with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. How many know there's power attached to God's Word? Power attached to the Gospel because the Gospel is power. You know something? Demonstration always follows the kingdom message. Come on, there's so, there's so many books on the kingdom. There's so many teachings on the kingdom. So There's so many teachings on how to walk through walls and visit planet Pluto and all this crazy stuff. But there's very little demonstration of the kingdom. See, we need to raise the standard of what we call the supernatural because the supernatural brings substance, brings evidence that Christ is alive today. Come on, how many know Christ is in you? Power of God's in you. Nature of God's in you. See, what separates Christianity from every other religion is the power of God. That the power of God can reach through you, touch somebody, set somebody free, heal somebody. Come on, because what God puts in you will set somebody free. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I know what it's like to be in another nation where they've never seen a gospel of power. You, you, you know, they may have been lucky enough to hear the message of salvation and been born again, but they've never seen the gospel demonstrated with miracle signs and wonders where people are getting healed, set free, delivered. 
This is the most amazing thing to go into another nation where people are so hungry for God. They'll travel six hours, walk six hours down the side of a mountain just to get in your meeting and get a touch from God. Get healed. Come on. I prayed for a woman's eyes when I was in Nepal, and God melted the cataracts off of her eyes. Man, I'm telling you, that will, that will just wreck you forever. I mean, I'm forever wrecked. I just can never go back to religion because I'm so messed up by a gospel of power. Come on, if you would have seen that, you, you'd be messed up like me. Amen. You'd be messed up in the glory like me. You'd just be in the river, two feet up in the river, just... Gospel's good, amen. When, when I got to Nepal, uh, they brought us to the place where we were staying. They, they brought my father and I to the place where we were staying. And there was five tarantulas on the wall. Five hairy tarantulas. Let me tell you something. There's going to be no tarantulas in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's going to be no tarantulas in heaven. Somebody say amen. Shukaraba. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11. I want to show you something in Mark chapter 11 tonight. Just shout glory when you get there. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, verse 12, excuse me, verse 12. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, it says that Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came that he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Come on, so, so Jesus is hungry. He approaches this tree. And there's, he, he approaches the fig, tr the fig tree, and there's no fruit on it. Do you ever wonder why Jesus went to the tree? I mean, wouldn't Jesus know that there's no figs on the tree? The all-knowing Jesus, wouldn't he know there's no figs on the tree? But the man's like me. I mean, he's, he's like hungry like me sometimes. He wants burrito king sometimes. He wants a pizza like pie. Come on. So he gets to this tree and he finds that there's, there's no fruit on it. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. So, so Jesus sees this tree. He sees that there's no fruit on the tree. And he curses the fig tree. Do you ever wonder why Jesus cursed the fig tree? Why would Jesus curse the fig tree? I know why. Because why settle for dead, fruitless, powerless things to be in your life? To stick around in your life, to get in between you and your destiny, between you and your family. Why not speak to that thing and curse it at the root? Amen? Come on now, I'm not talking about cursing people. I'm talking about speaking to devils that get in your way because devils are territorial spirits. Devils are trespassers by nature and you have to remind them that you have authority, that you have power because the Bible says that we're called to tread upon snakes and scorpions. Now how many of you know say, snakes and scorpions are territorial? Come on, you just, some of you just need to lift up your leg, just step on that thing. Come on somebody. How many of you want to get violent in the kingdom of God? Get violent after your call. Get violent after your destiny. Begin to get in the glory and just start to speak to stuff. You'll see stuff change. You'll see stuff move. Come on. So, so, so verse 20. And in the morrow as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. You see that there? And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. My God, this is so powerful. I tell you right now, you get this revelation out of Mark 11. 
It'll change your life. And so Jesus spoke to the fig tree. And, and, and listen, he cursed the fig tree. And his words went right into the root of the tree. Right into the root of the tree. And immediately the tree began to die. But you see, on the outside of the tree, it didn't seem like anything had changed. I mean, it, it, didn't, it didn't die on the outside immediately. But Jesus spoke His faith, and His words went right into the root and hit that thing. And so, come on, faith was in motion. Amen? How many of you want to start speaking to some stuff in your life? Come on, hit your neighbor, say your words carry power. Come on, in order for you to speak like that, believe like that, talk like that, your faith has to be continually stirred and activated. Come on, faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Right? The Bible says we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. How many know some Christians go from glory to glory to glory? Come on, I'm going from glory to glory, amen? And so, and so Peter saw the fig tree. And said, the tree is dead as a result of what you said. Look at, look at Mark eleven twenty two. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Translates, have the God kind of faith. Oh, I'm telling you this is good. Because what you've got to understand is Jesus didn't talk to the tree and curse the tree as, as God. He spoke to the tree as a son of God with authority. Come on. How many of you are a son of God, a daughter of God with authority? Come on. This is good. This is good. Because you can have the very faith of God. The Bible says that, that we have the same spirit of faith. Paul said, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Come on, you want to know what you really believe will come out when there's a circumstance in front of you. When there's something that comes in your way, what you really believe will come out of your, come out of your mouth. Just like when Jesus loaded His disciples in the boat and said, we're going to the other side. Can you picture the disciples saying, we are going to the other side. Praise God, we're going to the other side. Storm came and they totally changed their mindset. we got to wake Jesus up. Speak to the storm, Jesus. Come on. Jesus rebuked them, right? For their unbelief. You want to know why? Because they could have spoke to the storm. They could have taken authority over that situation. There were so many times we find in the Gospels where Jesus was trying to bring the disciples' faith up to where his faith was at. And rebuke them for their unbelief. I mean, because I used to read over that for many years and think, man, Jesus was so harsh. On his disciples. But really he was just challenging them. To, to have the very same faith. You know if you read about the story. About the feeding of the 4,000. Uh, there was a multitude gathered. And Jesus said. You know why don't you. Why don't you feed them. Give them something to eat. And Jesus' disciples said. Well what are we going to feed them. There's nothing to feed them. And Jesus took five loaves. Two fishes. Broke the loaves. Broke the fishes. And fed over 5,000. But the disciples could have done that because they, they had the very same power, the very same authority. Are you getting this tonight? Listen, what did Jesus tell Peter? He said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven that whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Come on, but you know what? It takes words to do it, doesn't it? It takes speaking. It takes believing. It takes action. Say action tonight. Come on. Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever... Who's a whosoever tonight? Come on, two, three people. Who's a whosoever? Heaven's watching tonight. Come on. <laughs> whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Come on, your mountains are not going to move themselves. You've got to speak to them. You've got to talk to them. Your Goliaths aren't going to move out the way. 
Come on, Joshua and Caleb had to take the land by force. They had to get aggressive. Come on, I'm all about getting aggressive. And when it comes to devils and taking territory for the kingdom of God. And people ask me, they say, well, how, how are you and your wife doing what you're doing? I mean, how are you traveling around the world? How are you doing all this? By faith? By speaking? By believing? And they're waiting to hear something else. How are you seeing the power of God? How are you seeing people healed? How are you seeing tumors dissolved? By faith? By speaking? And they're waiting to hear something deeper. But really, the deepest, the deepest thing that you could get as a revelation in God's Word. Come on, I don't care about how many angels people see. If there's no fruit in it, I don't want it. Come on, if it doesn't result in somebody getting healed or getting a breakthrough or getting set free, come on, I don't want it. I want the power of God. I want the real thing. Come on. Talking to somebody tonight. So my wife and I, were, were, uh, we were ministering in Milwaukee this year. And... Uh, doing a conference, three-day conference, and the pastor's wife brought this woman to us and said, will you pray for this woman? She has eight brain tumors, six weeks to live, stage four cancer. Stage four. This is like really serious, right? God has to heal this woman or she's going to go on to be with the Lord. And so my wife and I, we just looked at each other and we just prayed by faith. And we cursed the tumors. We just spoke to the tumors by faith that they would die at the root. And we didn't even feel like anything had changed. I didn't feel any anointing. I didn't feel any virtue. Come on, there was no virtue flowing. There was no healing anointing. Do you ever pray sometimes and you feel like, you know, your prayers don't leave the ceiling and enter into the throne room? You, you ever speak to stuff and, you're, and you feel like nothing has changed? But who said you had to feel anything at all? The Bible says to speak. The Bible says believe. Come on. The Bible says take authority. And so this woman goes to the doctor and they couldn't find the tumors. Come on, somebody. Somebody get excited about Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. That's pretty awesome. Eight brain tumors, stage four cancer, six weeks to live. I don't know, there could have been angels. I didn't see any angels, but I, I just spoke the healing word with my wife. We came into agreement, prayed the prayer. The woman's totally healed, set free, delivered. Isn't that awesome? Could I get, could I get somebody on the keyboard tonight? Would that be all right? Can I, yeah, can I get you on the keyboard? Praise God. Whew. How many are going to start speaking to some stuff? Come on, how many of you know your words carry power? Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm telling you, it's all about getting that revelation, right, of who you are as a son, a daughter of God, that you can speak, that you can take, a, take authority over stuff. Come on, you don't have to live beneath your God-given rights and privileges. You just got to rise up and start taking authority, start speaking to stuff. I'm telling you. How many know that Jesus was a son of God? The Bible says that the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God to come forth. The earth is waiting on you. Come on, somebody's waiting on you because you're carrying somebody's breakthrough. Because what's in you will set somebody free. Come on, it's the kingdom in you. It's the power of God in you. Yeah, just lightly if you would. Just, that sounds really awesome what you're playing. I love it. Feel the, feel the anointing on that. Listen, Jesus was a son of God, a prototype of what you and I are to be like, what we're to look like. He was a model, an example of what we're to, what, what, what we're to resemble. Come on, you're called to resemble Jesus. You're called to resemble your heavenly Father. Come on, how many know you have an earthly Father? You have a heavenly Father with a heavenly DNA. Come on, do you know the nature of God is to speak those things that are not as though they are? 
Listen, the Bible says that when Jesus came to the earth, He laid aside His deity as God. He, he laid aside His power as the second person of the Trinity. He laid it aside. And He never performed a single miracle until after He was baptized by John, the Holy Spirit came upon Him. Come on, the heavens opened up. Some people say, oh, Lord, just open the heavens. No, the heavens are already open. They've been open since Jesus was baptized by the Holy Ghost. Come on now, Jesus came to the earth to demonstrate miracles not as God, but as a man anointed by God. As a man filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Come on somebody, shout power. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Come on, how many of you know, how many know sickness is a work of the devil? Oppression is a work of the devil. Come on, tarantulas, work of the devil. Come on, he was a model for you and I. The Bible says that Jesus came with the government of God resting on his shoulders. He came with the government of God wrapped in the government of God like a mantle. Come on. How many of you want to be clothed with the government of God? The Bible says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He was clothed in the government of God. Clothed in the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 22, 22. The, the, the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. Come on, that's government. That's dominion. That's authority. You know, we have this mindset in the church that, that we're just to lay back and, and, and let the enemy just overtake everything. Because we think that's the will of God. That it's just going to get darker and darker and darker until Christ returns. But... Uh, the way I read the Bible, it's just going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 60, Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has been risen upon you. Come on, now it's, it's going to get brighter and brighter. The Bible says the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. That's a lot of glory. I mean, if you think about that, that's a lot of glory. Come on, somebody. That's, that's a lot of glory. I mean, the earth is two-thirds water. Just picture two-thirds glory on the earth. See, but something happens when you begin to get a revelation as an individual that the glory is in you, that the power of God's in you. The glory rises up because revelation unlocks things on the inside of you. It unlocks the river of God on the inside of you. See, some Christians, they put all their faith in their feelings. Come on, but we're called to put our faith in the gospel and the word of God. The Bible says that the fullness of God dwells on the inside of you. That's the kingdom. That's the Holy Ghost. How many of you know that you've received the authority of God? Same authority that Jesus has been given to us. Come on, same power, same kingdom. At the cross, Jesus spoiled principalities and powers strip them of power see all the dominion and authority that Adam lost in the garden Jesus came to restore come on how many of you want a key to working the works of Christ this is a key this is a key right here getting a revelation of the kingdom getting a revelation of the kingdom in you just lay hands on your spirit right now just say father I thank you for your glory, your power in me. Lord, let it spring up into new levels. Into new levels, Lord. <sighs> Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost on that. Hallelujah. Say, Father, I thank you. I'm going to a new level tonight in my revelation of authority in dominion in power in Jesus mighty name now just give God a mighty shout
I'm going to have you turn one more place. I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. I'm going to wrap it up on this right here. And then we're going to flow into a time of impartation, miracles, whatever the Lord wants to do. Just pray in the Holy Ghost till you, till you get there. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You see that there? Unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Jesus went to the cross for our glory. The Bible says that, that Jesus came to bring many sons unto glory. Come on, somebody said, I wish I could get in the glory. You're already in the glory. Come on, you're already seated there. You're already seated on the right hand where there are pleasures forevermore. Where the river of God is flowing. Where the power of God's flowing. Come on, we just got to develop our faith in it. Say, I don't feel the glory. Who said you had to feel anything? Bible says believe. Bible says speak. Come on. So, so Jesus was the hidden wisdom of God. The mystery of God. The principalities did not know. They did not know that by crucifying Jesus, what would happen? See, the enemy didn't know. The enemy thought that he had Jesus beat when he went to the cross. The enemy thought, if I could just get rid of this one son. But listen, the blood made a way. Hit your neighbor, say, the blood made a way. The blood made a way for the kingdom of God to come and abide and reside on the inside of believers. Come on, we have an abiding glory. We have a residing glory on the inside of us. Come on, it's a river that never runs dry. It never runs out. Come on, it's some of you just getting ready to just spill over on the inside. Just overflow. Come on. Just say, thank you, God, for your river tonight. Just stand to your feet right now. Just stay, just stay in the anointing right now. Just, just lift your hands right now. Lord, we just thank you right now. Lord, we thank you right now for the rivers flowing, God. The rivers flowing. The river of revelation flowing. The river of glory flowing. Lord, we just thank you. We just open our hearts right now. Holy Spirit, we, we just invite you. To just come, release another wave. Another wave, Lord God. Another wave. Even over this house, God, that there would be another wave of signs, wonders, miracles, hearing, seeing over this house, Father. Another wave of your glory. Shapara kelemastai. Rebase kelemambo. Reselebase kelemai. just thank you God for your habitation over this house your habitation your, your, your dwelling over this house God your glory over this house I'm telling you right now there's a shift happening lift your hands right now there's a sweet anointing right now Thank you, Lord. Some of you just need to take this in right now. It's refreshing over you. It's refreshing right now. It's refreshing. Just take that right now.
Subala Masti Kilimash to Konda Lamandi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Rema sele bandelere. Wola masende manai. Pour it out like oil, Lord. Oh, pour it out like honey, Lord. Woo! Pour it out. Pour it out like oil. Hey! Pour it out like rivers in the desert. Hey! Glory, glory. Mm. I'm going to new levels in the glory. New levels in the glory. I'm going to new levels. Come on, I'm telling you right now, God's lifting some of you into new realms right now, new levels right now. Stirring up the glory, stirring up the river. Woo. Come on right now, just start speaking to some things right now in your life. Come on, just start speaking to bank accounts. Start speaking right now to sons and daughters to come home. Just start speaking right now. Speak in the glory. Reba City. There's an anointing for breakthrough right now. Right now, there's an anointing for breakthrough right now. Well, we call them in, Father, right now. Lost sons and daughters, we call them in right now, Father. I thank you for financial breakthrough right now, Father. I thank you for breakthrough right now. Come on, shout breakthrough tonight. Come on, shout it like you mean it. Shout Breakthrough! Breakthrough! Right now we're going to open up the altar. If you need a healing or a miracle, I want you to come up right now. Healing or, or a miracle right now. I'm telling you there's an anointing here tonight. Hallelujah. Just everybody in the anointing, just lift your hands. Just worship the Lord right now. Woo. 
thank you, Lord. Come on, Amy. Lord, I thank you. I thank you right now. <sighs> Miracles. Miracles. Let's just worship the Lord. Let's just, if we could, uh, Allie, if you could sing something, anything. I even feel like there's someone, um, you have a chemical imbalance. It's like something to do with the brain. It might even be causing like a growth or something. If that's someone in here, you got a, a chemical imbalance. Um, I want you to come up right now. Is that you? No. Okay. If that's you, I want you to come up right now. I also felt like there's someone uh, with a right shoulder, a pain in the right shoulder, and it's like shooting down the arm. So if that's someone in here, I want you to come up right now. somebody here you have a there's a burning in your intestines i don't know if you have it right now but you have it frequently it's a real burning is that you you okay praise god get prayer for that and then also uh i believe there's a, a a young couple here that you know that the lord's called you both of you to ministry together and i, I just want to talk with you i want to minister to you if you don't want to come up right now during the prayer line that's fine uh, if you want to talk to me after the service, that's fine. But I, I, if that's you, I want to talk to you and, and just pray for you. Come on, what's going on? You had the shoulder, you had pain that shot down your arm, and what's happening right now? Uh, it's not there anymore. No more pain? And you said it was popping. You said it was still popping, so we prayed again. We commanded the popping to stop, and what's happening now? I don't have any popping. No more popping. Come on. Give God a shout for that. <laughs> Woo. 
Hallelujah. Father, just bless her right now. Come on, just bless her. Bless her family, Father, right now. Bless her finances, Father. Bless her in every realm and every way, Father. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for power, restoration, miracle working power right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, redeeming time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Father. If there was somebody in here who had the chemical imbalance, I just want you to come up. Chemical imbalance in the brain. Also, um, does the word carnation mean anything to anybody? Carnation. Mean something to you? Does it mean anything to anybody else? Carnation. Okay, if it, whoever it is, just come up to me. Just come up here. If there's anybody else, just come up here. Hold on a second. Does it mean something to you too? Okay, come here. Let me hear what it Let's go.
Praise God. Sister Pat came up here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. She came up here with her hip hurting really bad. And um, she responded to the word carnation. And the Lord gave me that word, but he also said that there was going to be some kind of physical problem with the person that uh, comes up for it because that's what was going to draw them up. Her hip was hurting her real bad, and her tongue was hurting her real bad. It was real sensitive and just real, just it was hurting her as she came up, and she said all the pain in both areas instantly left and became healed. Amen? Praise God for that. Praise God. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, if you want prayer, just come up. If you want prayer right now, uh, just come up. Who, who felt uh, something change in their body? You came up expecting a miracle. Who felt a change in their body? You felt heat. You felt something change. Praise God. A few people. Come on. Hallelujah. All the, all the young people are getting touched tonight. It's amazing. Lord, I thank you, God. Come on, just all the young people come up here. Just come on. I'm telling you, there's a there's an anointing for impartation right now. Just the young people. Just come on up here. Shukarabasa.
If you're a, a part of the, the youth group here in church, if you meet with Josiah and you're a part of that group, that ministry, I want you to come up here right now. Just come on up right here in the front. Josiah, you guys come on over here. Josiah, the, the winds of change. The winds of change are coming over the youth. There's a Holy Spirit wind that's going to start blowing over this group right here. Yeah. Whoa. Though sabara simbro me. The winds of change. You guys are just the seed. You're just that small starting group. Play the piano, sister. Hallelujah. If she can, can you? <laughs> Give it a try. But listen to me, the winds of change are starting to blow over this part of the ministry, over, over this group. I don't even know what all of that's about. It's like Brother Jesse was saying earlier about the tornado or the, the whirlwind. All I know is that God speaks out of the whirlwind, like he did to Job. Amen? And so I, when I came in the building tonight, I just felt like God wanted to minister to the youth group and help you step into this winds of change thing whatever that means and so i've asked jesse and amy if they would just minister to you however the lord leads them but just open your heart right now open the door of your heart and say lord let the winds of change blow on me in my life i want to be a part of what you're doing corporately here in that area Release it tonight, God. Winds of change over her life. <sighs> Let it blow. Let it blow. Let it come, Lord. Let it come, Father. <sighs> the fire of God. <sighs> Burn. <sighs> Thank you, God, for the next generation, Father. The next generation. Come on, this is the next generation. Just stretch your hands towards these young guys. The power of God's flowing. We thank you right now.
Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Open the eyes of your heart. Begin to thank God for what he's done in your life tonight. Begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice in who he is in your life and what he's done for you tonight. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we praise you, Father, for who you are, what you've done tonight. Glory to God. You've opened the door of light. You've caused your glory to come down. You've given us authority to rule and reign on earth's ground. We praise you tonight, and we bless your name, because from this point on, we'll never be the same. We bless your name tonight. We choose to live in thanksgiving all of our days because we know who you are and we know your ways. We know you're going to do what you say. And we rejoice in you, Father, in this day. We praise you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Give him praise. Give him thanksgiving. Hallelujah. No limits. No limits. His kingdom is in you, and there are no limits. He's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what you can even ask or think. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in you than the enemy in this world. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Winds of change, brother. Glory to God. You know, there's two things, two weapons to defeat the devil that are really cool. There's more than one, two, but one of them is to laugh in his face. Well, I wouldn't laugh at the devil. He might get mad. He's already mad. You talk about a frustrated being. He's as frustrated as it comes. How would you like it if you'd read your destiny in the Bible and it ended up in the lake of fire? Amen? Don't worry about his attitude. I used to have a t-shirt that said, when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. You don't have to take it from the devil. You can give it too, you know. Amen? And then there's another thing, and that is the word no. When the devil starts telling you stuff that you know is not in the Bible, say, no. No. I don't receive that. I won't believe that. When, man, when things start manifesting in your life that you know isn't from God, say, no. You have the right to say no. You have the authority to say no. All of heaven will back up your no. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Your parents taught you that when you were a kid. You kept wanting to do things that would hurt you or get you in trouble or mess things up, and they said, no. Hallelujah. At least I hope they did. Praise God. Oh, glory. You know, the, the biggest problem of the body of Christ is not us trying to get to some place. It's finding out who we are. There's a major identity crisis in the body. 
If you, if you know who you really are, who he is in you, who you are in him, you just live in praise and thanksgiving all the time. When the trials showed up, when the enemy showed up, you'd laugh at him and say, no, I'm not saying that you don't have days where the pressure's on and maybe you need to call your prayer partner and agree a prayer and all that kind of thing. But if you live on kingdom truth and the way it really is in your life in the kingdom and you approach the enemy, I heard Brother Hagin, Kenneth Hagin say this years ago, or maybe it wasn't him, but it was somebody back in the old days of the charismatic movement. They said that the devil knocked on the door, faith opened the door, and there was nobody there. When the enemy tries to knock on your door, answer with faith. Faith in God. Glory to God. I tell you, the presence of God is here. Can you sense it? Can you sense it? This room is full of God. You know why? Because you opened up to receive him. Because this man and woman of God came and brought him and released him and imparted things to you. So take those things, begin to walk in them, begin to rejoice in them. If the prophetic word of the Lord came to you, the Bible says if you receive the prophet as a prophet, you'll get the prophet's reward. You've got to believe and receive what God says to you. The reason he prophesied to you is because he knows the enemy is going to come and put pressure on you. You answer with the sword of the Lord. You answer with the word of prophecy. Paul told Timothy, war a good warfare with the prophecies that went forth before upon you. Your answer to the lies of the enemy. If you got healed and pain left your body tonight and it tries to come back, you, you prophesy to it. You answer the door with faith. Amen? See, I didn't get to preach here today, so I'm doing it now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and rejoice in the Lord. Just stand up and be thankful. Just stand up and act like everything you're believing God for has already happened because it has happened. It's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I just got the offering signal, so sit back down. <laughs> We're going to receive an offering real quick, a love offering. Praise God. Okay. Lift your hand if you need an offering envelope for uh, the love offering tonight. Now, we just ask you to do two things when we have guest speakers. This is what the Lord instructed me to do years ago. How many, don't you hate going to a church and, and having people work you for an offering? Have you ever been in a service where people were just, you know, and you know the old one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the, you know, and all that nonsense? I believe in spirit-led everything. And I believe in spirit-led giving. God knows what he wants you to put in the offering already. You may have already asked him. Some people ask him before they get to church. They already know. They've already got it set up ahead of time. But God knows what he wants you to put in the offering. Now, the Bible says that, uh, that we sow and we reap, right? So God is looking at their ministry, and he's saying, I know what their needs are going to be in the future. So I'm going to speak to people and have them sow into their ministry so their need will be met. But he's also looking at your life, and he's saying, I'm going to give them an opportunity to sow so that they can reap as well. See, God could have done this apart from us. He could have just said, you know what, I'm just going to have a businessman run into them in every city they go to and give them enough money to go to the next city. He could have done it that way, but he wants you in on the blessing. And so I'm, all I'm asking you to do right now is just pray and say, Lord, what do you want me to do in this offering? Amen? And if you get two figures, the, the one that's more is God and the one that's less is you. <laughs> Come on, are you here? But also, I'm having a little fun here now, but this, this is true. But also, let's come into a prayer of agreement that everything God wants them to have financially before they leave Madeira, it comes to them. Because, see, I don't limit God to the, the offering in the church. He, he might have somebody at the hotel give them something. Amen. Praise God. You've got to take the limits off of God. He can do things. He told me one time, he said, John, I've got more ways to get money to you than you could ever figure out. Quit worrying about it. Come on, are you here? So let's agree. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for Amy. Thank you for Jesse. Thank you for the call that's on their life. Thank you for the ministry. Lord, they're following after you. 
They're following the plan of God. You're taking them across this nation into other nations. You're using them in the specific customized call that's on their life. And we thank you, Father. We partner with that. We, re we have received the spiritual benefits and the giftings and anointings that they came to release and impart into us. And as your word says, it's only right that re we remunerate in those natural things you've blessed us with. And so we're going to do that. Holy Spirit, if you haven't already, quicken the hearts of your people. Show them what to do. And as they step out in faith and obey you, I thank you that not only are the needs of the, the, the Shamps ministry met, but the needs of your people are met as well. In Jesus' name. And we agree that they will have, before they leave Madera, California, in their hands, all that you desire for them to have. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and receive the offering, guys. All right, who got healed? Who had pain leave their body? Praise God. Can you tell us what happened? Oh, you're the shoulder pain. Yeah, okay. Who else? Somebody? Pain leave your body? Pat, you had pain leave your body. He already testified to that, too. Who else? Jessica? What happened? Shoulder pain. This must have been shoulder night, huh? Hallelujah. Anyone else? Yeah? What happened? Shoulder. Man, this is shoulder night. How, what, what happened to you? Your back. Yeah, my, Mike was telling me your back's been hurting for a long time, huh? How long has it been hurting? A year or two. Really, almost all the time, or, yeah, and the pain left tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Anybody else? I love to testify here. This gives other people hope. Maybe you didn't get a, a manifestation tonight, but if you'll go out of here with what God gave you by faith, you'll see the manifestation. I found that some people that have been in pain for a long time, they don't even know they're healed because they're used to just ignoring the pain and putting up with it. They get home, and two days later they say, you know, I got healed in that meeting. Praise God. Well, let's stand. Hallelujah. Are you glad you came to church tonight? I'm glad you did. It wouldn't have been fun without you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, I thank you for blessing your people. I thank you that this is a week of miracles. It's a week of destiny. It's a week, God, where they have divine encounters with you as they worship you and spend time with you in your word and in your spirit. I thank you, Father, for divine encounters with others. As they go out, they are salt and they are light, and they will uh, have open doors of ministry. And as they open their mouth, you will fill it, and you will speak prophetically to people in their uh, lives, at the schools, at the businesses, and around town this week. And I thank you, Father, that Madeira, or wherever these folks are from, will be changed as you work through them and as you bless them and use them for your glory this week. We thank you, Father. We're going to live in praise. We're going to live in thanksgiving. And we are going to rejoice in who you are in us all week. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Have a great week.